I would like to open to the floor to one or two questions. If you have any question or comment, please show it. Thank you. I'll come use the mic up here. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, presentation. My name is Caroline Fried, and I'm from a, a new think tank based in Taipei that does uh, policy research on the Asia Pacific, uh, called the Center for Asia Pacific Innovation, uh, Asia Pacific Resilience and Innovation. And so, I'd like to ask about your um, your opinion on the role of the private sector in uh, post normal uh, post normal politics and personal governance. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, it's an important question, yes, and I have not really um, uh, a satisfying maybe answer for you for that. Um, it's always difficult. I made good and bad experiences when I was a moderator to facilitate stakeholder involvement with from businesses and economy. And so it's difficult to say and at the moment, and I did not mention it in the presentation because I wanted to, first I thought about it the last couple of months or even year, about it, if it makes sense to have the stakeholder uh, deliberation separated. So for civil society, economy, and the political system. Then again, the question comes up, how do we aggregate the results? And, 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 and this is not only that you have an independent aggregator like us as experts because this is always very very tricky if you put them together it's also very tricky so because mostly not only the economy start lobbying and then that you can have problems to bring them to really exchange rational arguments but if i say that i experience much more that ngos do that the same and from them we, we conceptually assume the opposite, that they really start from the very beginning to argue. And they don't do it. When I observed these public, the stakeholder meetings in, on the Great Lakes, I was surprised. They make statements, it would be like from economy or from a, from a, a politician who, has, who is not open to any things. And then slowly over the time, they changed into an argumentative exchange and they were open for argument. But when they put give their statement, I thought, I cannot, I cannot believe what is happening. And this is not only one time. So, but this happens with them, because when they together, and one starts in that way, the other feels that I have to do the same. It's a psychological effect. We have to ask psychologists about that, how we can uh, uh, tackle that. Because when one group is doing that, the other feel, oh, if I don't do that now, my statement is not taken so seriously, and my wishes and my claims than the others. Even if it's then very partisan and very unobjective, yeah? And then it's, it's creating a kind of vicious circle, which is very difficult as facilitator, moderator, to bring back them, yeah? So, well, it's a difficult issue, but of course they cannot be excluded in any way in many of these international, uh, st uh, transnational uh, uh, governance approaches are often economic uh, actors involved, sometimes too much. There, there was a project in which I was an advisor is on the Baltic Sea, on the fisheries, which were the, the stakeholders uh, were mostly the fisheries industry. And they said, oh, we don't need any expertise because we count the fish by ourselves. <laughs> and they came to a much higher number than actually the, uh, the scientists did. Because they see and then they say, oh, it's in, still there. But of course, the logic is, if I would uh, admit that there is not enough, then I would get a lot of restrictions with regard to the fishing. And so these are the things that you have to, to balance and to find and to rationalize, which is very difficult. So I have to say, this is, there is no recipe for doing that in that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Dr. Klink. Um, this is Ling. Chen Bong from Chinese Culture University. Uh, I, I have a question for, um, for uh, your, your comments on the post cosmopolitanism, because um, I think uh, the way uh, you mention it, you take a um, so-called some kind of institutional uh, dimension um, way to describe it. But um, I, I rather have a different 
turn on that because um, as um, as a college professor, and um, I think most of us uh, work in college, um, I find a very difficult uh, situation in that most of the students, uh, we'll take students as an example. Um, um, student, most of the students come to the college to learn, not because they love to learn, because they have to learn. They, they are obligated to learn. So, so uh, but without passion and enthusiasm to participate, transitional, Learning, they their motivation is limited. Uh, so um, it, it's a it's a very uh, it's a very uh, important obstacle for 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 us for edu as educators. If for uh, this, on the same token, um, in this uh, cosmopolitan scenario, we require citizens to conduct a very broad transitional learning, and they have to learn, love to learn, not because they are citizens, they, they, they got out of their c civic uh, obligation. So um, that, that put me in a very hard uh, situation is that how can we motivate the uh, citizens uh, to really engage, um, uh, on the, uh, to, to make them love to do, uh, to conduct public discussion with different uh, stakeholders, even someone who has oppositional opinion uh, against you. Um, you said you are, you are optimistic uh, uh, on the, the involvement of the, um, the cosmopolitanism. Um, I'm not either pessimistic or optimistic, but, uh, but I'm I take this uh, stand because uh, out of the human nature, because I, I have been participating in a lot of uh, public deliberation uh, occasions, and, and I found that, uh, well, people want to get involved, want to get, uh, get uh, respected. However, they don't really want to spend too much time on it. <laughs> So, uh, so there, there, there has been a dilemma on this. And so, people need a new momentum of enthusiasm about public life, should be, and that would inspire them to, to throw more of their personal time into the public sphere. So it's not like we would create a, a public space that people will engage each other and pa passionately and spontaneously. And it, it it's not work. It doesn't work that way. So um, I, I just want to. Uh, but we 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 always take for granted that education will solve this problem. But however, if we take that's why I make the example for our college education. Education doesn't really solve that problem. Education will make you make make you knowledgeable. But not really an enthusiastic citizen to engage public affairs. So um, that is, that's why I'm very curious about how this work out. And 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 about can you can you uh, suggest a prototype of how how um, how ordinary citizens can be can be uh, learn or or, or uh, how how can how can we make them a passionate learner? <laughs> in the public sphere. Thank you. Okay. Do we have the last uh, question? Okay. Um, I want to make sure what have you mentioned is uh, about Germany. Uh, because I research uh, about um, makers' creation, green creation. Um, um, I think uh, all the, my, my question is uh, mm, even Germany is a democratic state. On the long term, the governments such as like Merkel, uh, Chancellor Merkel's coalition, uh, after mm, 2018, uh, the democrat, uh, democratic policy making system uh, in Germany has worked not well. 
not well, not good. I mean, uh, because uh, maker, just the maker has the uh, government's uh, nine, uh, eight, uh, 16 years, years long. Then uh, uh, after, uh, after um, Russia and uh, Ukraine war, um, many thing, many uh, uh, critical is uh, is founded that uh, uh, the government's energies uh, energies uh, uh, crisis uh, energies uh, policy has a good uh, has a serious problem that they because uh, uh, serious de dependence on Russia's uh, energy. Uh, fossil energy. So uh, I want to ask, uh, uh, but Germany is a democratic uh, state. If uh, uh, the system policy uh, policy making system in in makers coalition, coalition in the things or after night in uh, 2018 is a problematic. So then, uh, this is my uh, my core and uh, core the problem, poor, poor, poor question. So because you you have said uh, I mentioned previous uh, you have you have mentioned because the uh, um, maybe uh, some information of solution is funded, but the, but the. Uh, this uh, solution will be not uh, uh, reporting for for uh, for the ch for chancellor's uh, de desk. So uh, the chancellor or the SPD or and uh, the, the CDU and the um, the CSU the um, um, policy maker has not accepted the social uh, so information so important this information then they cannot go to uh, this, this so this, they cannot not, they can go to make a decision you understand what you mean um, or the, the, I will try <laughs> okay thank you well but first uh, to your uh, uh, comments and question and, and I'll get the most difficult question at the end. <laughs> um, I, I, I cannot provide a prototype of <laughs> learner, um, but I think just some short reflections um, um, is, um, I think it starts very early with the, of, um, from very old studies, we know this, you know all this, about it is uh, it was in the 60s and then revisited in the 70s and since then we don't we have some uh, uh, some advancement into that that we are divided into active and passive citizens and it is very hard to change that at all and has not much change yeah I see a little bit another change but this is more anecdotal if I talk with my students how active they become they become uh, in part some activist even, so that I have to say, well, you should be, because they spend too much time on that, and then they, and uh, the, um, the work on a thesis, for example, suffers, so I have to, to tell them uh, that you have to make a decision on that at the moment at least, so, for example. So what I think, uh, and that reflects a little bit my own uh, experience in my life, is um, if you have a chance very early as a child from your parents and in the circumstances that you and that knowledge uh, um, even learning I, I have the problem I try to explain my son learning is not a bad thing and it's not work so it's rather something which has to be fun and that can be it's in a way which is much easier when it started very early it becomes something which is like, well, that you, you brush your teeth every evening, that you learn every day, and more or less it is learning every day for them, even if they don't do it intentionally. So you, I try to translate that into that, and when I see people who have a background which is stronger with regard to that, 
they have an easier life in school and then they are the, rather the good students in the, at the university. So some of them get the turn then later. Of course, if they see, especially when they are feel um, affected very personally by something, risks plays there a, a major role, or they feel motivated because of some ideas. Yeah, um, here it's really when we have to bar, to talk about our education system, we need another one. We need to improve that. The classical kind of teaching that we have is often uh, not anymore, um, um, it, it does not get to them in that way as we expect as educators. And, um, for me it was easy to understand when they talk about theory and empirical empiricism and what it means to operationalize. It was just a kind of internal thing how I did my, all, my analytical thinking at all and that, that that just tailored it and, and advanced that. So, but if people don't have that, they have already problems to think analytically in their normal life. So and that has to be explained, not only in words, in communication, via much more projects that they can apply it and see what that does it mean. And then it becomes more uh, uh, interesting for them. And then it's important, I think, that, we, that they have more chances to change that they have a year at least at universities where they can find out. Because it's very difficult at school time then to find out what is the right discipline to study. Then they study something which is very popular among their peers. I did the same, was super stupid. Sorry that I say that. I studied uh, 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 mechanic engineering because m all my friends did it. So, well, I, it was not, I was not bad, but it was not fulfilling at all. It was not satisfying at all, so I changed. But this is very difficult in Germany. So, and I needed a couple of uh, 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 paths to come to social science at the end in that way. Yeah, and that should be made much easier that the students find interest in a discipline and what is around that, and give them an idea that this is a conveyor in something on which you are will dealing your whole life. I think we're also on a wrong, it has some advantages, but also disadvantages. Most of our master students do not do that in their jobs, in their professions, what they learned in, at university. Why we do that? So then we need to create something much more broad, which is uh, adjustable to the to prove to your professional life. So, um, a, a majority of that is happening to that. So that means that we, can, of course, on the one side, the job market does not offer always something, especially for social scientists. So, but nevertheless, I think it's much more important that we also uh, uh, get into a learning process that is not so important that you have a high salary later. It's rather something that satisfies you in different ways, yeah. Of course, we need salaries to survive. We cannot say, oh, it doesn't matter at all. But rather find something on which you then work 40 years in your life and have an interest. So I'm in the lucky situation, for example, that I made my hobby to my profession. So then it's not so much a problem to learn about that and to do this. And nowadays with the social media, that is also my problem with my son, he is still young, is, is he does not read books. Every information he gets is either from me, from the school, or via social media. And this is a big issue because if people do not see anymore the, the fun and the, the kind of satisfaction that you get through reading, then a lot get lost because in science, in our science world, is still, if it, we use it uh, digitally or virtually on, on, on Kindle or whatever, or we use books, well, it is written down, yeah, yeah, that the knowledge is written down. And then it's up to them to, to, they have to read things, even if they don't like. And they have to understand even more again that theories are necessary, that theories give us horizons, visions for the future and for a better life, yeah, in this profound language, if you allow to use that in that way. 
So that is something we have to say in a way. Otherwise, they will never get an access to a theory. And even they have written the master thesis, and then they do it the pitch, and they ask me still, why do I need a theory? And then I think, oh my god, I did something wrong. So I, what the problem is I'm very limited to change my, my uh, schedule of the course to, to integrate more projects in that way as I would like, because it's, it's, uh, uh, so, so, uh, um, uh, the, it's clear what kind of mandate they have, what kind of skills they have to get, and I try my best, more or less. I do not say to them, you, you will not learn much content at all you will learn analytical competences and skills. So I emphasize most of that, that I get out of that, because I explain them. When you have this, then you can do many things in many disciplines. You can read things and understand, and interp interpret things very quickly. But you need to have that as a very, very basis uh, of, your, of, your, of your thinking, of your, of your uh, approach mentally to the world. Yeah, and that is what we do as scientists anyway. Yeah. Um, I did not fully understand, and I would be, even if I criticize my country, my government very heavily, uh, <laughs> to say it was not good after 2018, and I was not sure why it's just 2018. So um, the, the, the issue is G Germany is, is, has no resources. Germany has one big resources, which is in the last couple of years, uh, very neglected is human brain, human capacity. And our education system is declining, so this is another discussion. So Germany is depending much on the import of resources from all over the world. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was this, this thinking in Germany, at least for 10 years until 2000, in the 90s, that we can approach Russia and help them, and this was, this, this was a doctrine uh, by Kohl and later also by Merkel, if we promote uh, the economic trade, also this will help to promote democracies in the countries from which we import things. And that was the general idea. It is still a little bit uh, in place today, but they changed it. They say this is not working because the reality showed that it is not working at all. But we made us, we have to be dependent on that. And that was cheap. And Putin was, I do not know it was a strategy or not. At the end, I would say it was. He, know, he knew already a long time ago what he plans to do. Um, and so it was a kind of obvious strategy to make us dependent on him, on the resources, especially with regard to energy. And, and, but Germany is dependent on everything. We are dependent on you with regard to semiconductors. And this is the new technology. Yeah, it will not work in any way if you would say, oh, no, we, we do not export it anymore to Germany and the rest of the world as well. You produce more than 50% of semiconductors worldwide. Yeah, and this is the world and all the new technology, the energy sector, uh, the mobility sector and other sectors, the health sector is depending on, on this kind of devices. So we need that, and we, we also now get an, another dependency of new resources, which is creates new things. We think we are make us, in Germany it's called de-risking from China, for example. We import a lot of lithium for the batteries that we need um, in the cars. Lithium is the most the, uh, used component and other uh, rare uh, uh, earths. And China is producing most of them and exporting worldwide. So not only that the environmental degradation with the exploitation of this rare earth is terrible and nobody is taking care or interested what is happening in China that they really destroy uh, huge territories because of that and we cannot intervene because that's their sovereignty on the other side we are depending on that so we but we make us dependent on a lot of other things for which we also have no alternatives yeah this is the, the big thing. The next big thing on which we are depending is sea mining. It starts right now. And yesterday, Norway, as a good example for the, the fund that they do for the future, the future fund, of course, was all because of the oil exploitation. But now they say, well, we'll do the same with, uh, I do not know how to translate it directly. It's the, the Russes' mangan, 
do you say mangan? This is very uh, uh, important uh, uh, chemical compound for chemical industry for everywhere, also in the new industries, in the new uh, technologies and others. And that is existing in, in, the, in the cliffs in front of, in, in the territory, uh, in the marine territory of Norway. So they will be, and Canada, my country where I live, right now will be doing one of the first, and Russia and China will follow very soon, yeah. So we are depending on things which are difficult to say, and I often criticize that. And this is the, Germany has a um, uh, long time after, uh, from after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s, they followed an interest-based foreign policy with regard especially to economy and foreign affairs. And that changed a little bit now with the Green Social Party Alliance. And they say it should be more value-based. But it cannot only be value-based. We have to be pragmatic. We would not be in any way maintain our social welfare and, uh, and social being in that way if we would give up too much. We are depending on China. And we are depending on others. Now we create new ones with Saudi Arabia. Well, if what is value-oriented uh, uh, foreign policy if I now make business with, with uh, Saudi Arabia, one of the most autocratic systems in the world? But this is the thing that we not can, uh, we are uh, um, not c uh, consistent in that, and we cannot be consistent. But it should be better explained, and we should be more careful in a way, yeah, in that way, yeah. The, uh, yeah, Germany okay. and European Union call that the okay, risk. I think it's a uh, good debate uh, that, uh, how did uh, the milk uh, contribute to the uh, <laughs> dependency of the energy to uh, okay, thank you. So I think that uh, today we have uh, actually a uh, discussion uh, concentrating on the, the academic methodology, but actually we also invite some discussion about the public deliberation and uh, how can we actually implement uh, the public uh, deliberation of the uh, science democracy to deal with the uncertainty, to deal with uh, the, the transition, the transformation, yeah. We yeah, together met either Taiwan, Taiwanese or the other countries' citizens. So uh, we, I would like to thank the yeah, Professor uh, Anders Klinker. Yeah, please give our big hand. Thank you. So we ended uh, the forum. Okay, thank you.